Welcome to a Halloween episode, a spooktacular episode, if you will, of How Could You Forget? A fun podcast where your hosts, Gurdon, Lexi, and Eric, come together and learn about a topic that maybe you'd forgotten about, never heard about, or it's simply too good to forget. All right, perfect. That's where, yeah, this is where, this is where I'll start it. Let's go. First, <laughs> first try, first try, one take. First one take Andy over here, yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's go. That's some uh, swag for the rest of us. See, <laughs> oh my god. No, I can't. <laughs> I can't. So, I'm not the one that's going to be hosting this episode. I think, maybe because it's so spooky, we'll leave this up to Lexi. How does that sound? Sounds good to me, Gurdon. Thanks. Yeah, um, Lexi loves spooky stuff. <laughs> As I was saying um, off script earlier, I'm, I'm spooky in the unsettling way, not in the funny way. So um, I still don't so, still not entirely certain what that means. <laughs> Neither of us know what that means. Right? It's unsettling. I, uh, I mean, it's a good point. Exactly. I am unsettled. I'm I mean, unsettled because exactly. I just don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> What's supposed to be Confusion? happening? I think she's hinting. Exactly. I think she's hinting. She's like, she's like an eldritch type of horror. We're like, it's oh. scary because you don't understand what it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm like out. I'm a, like a witch out in the hut in the middle of the forest, you know. So yes, that's correct. Um, I'm gonna be uh, talking about a topic here for our Halloween episode, and um, I thought it was really interesting because I am not really someone that likes true crime, super like scary stories so like this will not be an episode of you know scary gory stuff uh but more so um a look at halloween in general um at, at least from my lens you know being an american um growing up in america and kind of the history of canceling halloween or just straight up pretending that halloween isn't a thing um, Lexi's going woke and canceling Halloween. Okay. <laughs> no. no, I am <laughs> Let's not. Let's go. Um, Let's go. The, the reason why I was thinking about this is actually because I was reflecting on when I was younger and there were a few years of my life when I was a kid that we were not allowed to celebrate Halloween. Um, my parents were going to a very strict evangelical church at the time um and fair warning on this we will be discussing religion um want to give the overarching theme that it's okay to be religious it's okay to be a christian um that's mainly what we're going to be talking about um however there are obviously certain groups that take things to certain extremes and so that's more of what we're going to be talking about not any one person's individual beliefs specifically um, some individuals just be kind of cringe. True, <laughs> that is so true. Some some organized groups be kind of cringe. Um, yeah, cringe, cringe in the cringe in the bad way, not not in the not cool cringe way. in the funny way. Is there a good way. way to be cringe? Actual question. I mean, I'm I'm literally right here. Like I'm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I was not expecting that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so yeah, uh, with that PSA out of the way or that disclaimer out of the way, um, yeah, there were a few years when I was younger that my parents were going to um, pretty strict evangelical church. And um, I have found this within a lot more like fundamentalist Christian groups, a lot of like fundamentalist Protestant groups that there is a big thing around not celebrating Halloween because it is seen as demonic. It's seen as relating to the devil. Of course, horror movies are off the table. Anything involving witchcraft, wizardry, really Harry Potter also lump that in there. Um, all of that is kind of seen as like a you don't bring that into your home because that is letting the devil in and it's you know, goes against what you should be doing as a Christian who's living for God and, and, and seeking God's uh, favor and wisdom and, and guidance for your life. So um, I wanted to start with kind of a, the personal story and then kind of open it up to you guys, ask you guys some questions, all that kind of stuff. So um, the reason why this sticks out for me is, like I said, uh, there were years where we did celebrate Halloween when I was really little, you know, from the time I was a baby to about probably five or six years old, I would say. We were actually 
allowed to celebrate Halloween. We went trick or treating in the neighborhood. Um, you know, uh, did Halloween type activities uh, so much so that I think I was probably you're yeah, probably around five or six. My brother is about six years older than me. He actually got to be Harry Potter for Halloween, um, mm. and so that was totally fine. That was totally cool. And then probably by the time I was maybe around seven or eight years old, uh, that was when my parents had been really influenced by the church that they were going to at the time. And I remember them being like, oh, okay, we're going to be something nice for Halloween this year. And so um, there was a year I was an angel for Halloween um, or like, you know, the harvest festival, whatever you want to call it, because um, our church had a like event near or on the night of Halloween that you were supposed to go to church and, you know, uh, play little games at the church instead of doing the sinful satanic thing of going and trick-or-treating yeah it's right sense, yeah Instead yeah of, the simple act of going to people's houses and asking for candy right right or <laughs> yeah. watching a movie you a spooky movie or, or anything <laughs> like that <laughs> so um so yeah I, I was an angel one year i was i got to be a cheerleader for one year which said i literally wore sweatpants and a sweatshirt I don't. <laughs> I don't the most I, cheerleader. It was thing most committed do. cheerleader. Yeah, it was very lazy. Um, I got to be like don't a even butterfly. Need pom-poms. You just got <laughs> right. Well, I did have pom poms. I did have pom poms. So oh, um, okay. okay. Well, yeah. I've got I've got a picture. I can I can send to you if you uh, want to add that in. But um, so yeah, it was Eric. always things that were acceptable. To, to dress up as you know no my brother could no longer be harry potter he could not read the books as they were coming out um so that got shut down pretty quickly and one of the things that i recall about this time was that there was actually a dvd that my parents had received from the church as like it was just straight up propaganda i mean i i was going to try to find a nicer word for it but it was just straight up propaganda um and it was basically advising parents or advising maybe not just parents but the church congregation on like why halloween is evil and i went up to their room and i saw this and so um i think it was in their dvd player and i had went up there uh turned on the tv i don't know i don't really know what why i was why you up, were there. up there what, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what the reasoning was for it but i remember turning on the dvd player and um and and yeah i think it was a dvd i'm sitting there trying to think i'm like maybe it was a vhs was i really can't Max. recall no <laughs> i know <laughs> it was it a laser that. disc yeah <laughs> wait is a laser disc video I, I it may have been a vhs <laughs> to be honest i i genuinely can't recall but i do remember uh pressing play on what was a what was in there and it was like this spooky music and this like laughing and it had something to do with the messaging of like you know halloween is evil and it you know brings demons into your house and all this stuff and like as christians we shouldn't do that and it was very fear-mongering um because of course it was so that really got me thinking about halloween in general and how interesting it is because um of course some countries don't even celebrate it at all other countries you know have different ways of celebrating it um and i think that that's it's just weird how much individual experience can uh, differ on those kinds of things so what has been your guys's experience with halloween did you have something similar where people were fear-mongering about it or has it always just been Hey, yo, pumpkins and candy moment. Like <laughs> Pumpkins and candy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from personal experience, like, not really. I think just because, like, I'm I'm in Canada and we're not as, like, there, there are some, like, evangelical, like, super kind of groups like that up in Canada, but not to the point where, like, there was any, like, there was a, like, you know, like, all, all the kids around my school, we all got to do, like, trick-or-treating and dress up however we wanted. Right. I mean, you know, to, to, to an extent, obviously, of course, but... Yeah. There was never like any fear mongering that I remember specifically back okay. then. I also have a really bad memory, so <laughs> maybe <laughs> That's great. I'm I mean, missing, I feel yeah. like if you would have been told or like shown spooky stuff, you probably 
like that probably would have stuck with you though yeah like, even i feel like yeah bad. yeah because i do remember other things from when i was younger that like really spooked me or really was kind of like fear mongery that left an impact on me but none of it really had to do with halloween Okay. Um, at least not in Canada, and it could be the area I was in. Maybe it was you know more chill about that. I think also part of it is that Canada on religion is just a lot less like in your face. Like it's a oh, lot yeah. less super obvious <laughs> than it is. Yeah, in America. I mean, I I grew up in in the Midwest in America, so like that was very yeah very religious. Yeah, my ass who lived like a couple hours away from Toronto. It's like yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> night and day there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for for my ex- personal experience as well, I I'm very similar to what Lexi went through. Is that like I had this kind of the same upbringing of very very Christian parents and very much stuff like that as well. And so like I remember one year where yeah I wasn't allowed to do anything Halloween like at all. Like nope, we're gonna stay inside. And like I think even my mom made like a salt ring around my house to protect from from demons Whoa. that night and stuff. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, for, uh, that's for the even... audience, for the audience members in the uh, in the in the audience right now, I know about uh, Goran's mom. That's pretty tame <laughs> compared to the guys. Kind of st- <laughs> like I don't want. Yeah. Uh, like he ain't like wrong. you know, I can believe it. There's there's no hyperbole here. I just want to clarify that. I just. Want- <laughs> I can believe it too. I had just never heard that that she she made a salt <laughs> ring around the house. Yeah, to keep us safe from demons. Yeah, Lexi, duh. Why else would you make a salt ring around the house than to keep you safe from demons? That's even a step above, like, what my family was doing at the time. Because they were just like, yeah, you can't go out and trick-or-treat. We're going to, like, you got to be something God-honoring and we're going to go to church. Like They're not going to give you something sweet to eat, Lexi. You don't have that. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. So, yeah, like that. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Like, that was one of the examples, like, I remember specifically growing up and being very kind of like you're talking about, like, oh, man, like, gotta gotta be really good and very stuff like this. And then, again, that year where I was just not even allowed and we stayed inside afraid of demons that might come get us during Halloween. And then just going to my grandma's house, like, the next year or even sometimes the day after and just going trick-or-treating and everything being perfectly fine. And I was like, what the, wow. what the heck is this? <laughs> like, what is all this? What have I been told about? Like, which one's true? Like, that's very hard, especially as a child, because you just don't know which is re- real and which is true and all that stuff. Because on one side, it might be like, oh, okay, like, yeah, you're we're going to go celebrate Halloween and enjoy this thing and this thing and this thing. And then the next time it could be just something real, real rough and like, uh oh, you're going to get it's got like by. It's like scary. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get got by the evil Santa, like the evil, not Santa evil halloween monsters and demons and i was like oh no like i'm gonna get eaten by these but like you're a kid right, so you and that's just... oh sorry you can finish no, what you're, you were you're saying good. i just uh but... that's what i was gonna say is that like it's it's one thing to have certain like legends or stories within a culture that are like more on the scary side or like you know more of unexplained sort of things but I can imagine for you it was a lot like a, it's like a whiplash feeling of like, okay, some of my family is, you know, they're sitting here putting salt around our house, praying, like not wanting demons to enter our house. And then some of my family members like, here, have this full size snicker bar. Like that's so, yeah. that is just, yeah, whiplash is really the only word that I can think of is just, <laughs> Yeah, I love wow. that movie. What? <laughs> Shut up, Eric. <laughs> fine film, fine film. It's a oh, very, yes, mm, indeed. Sorry. <laughs> very good film, yes. A man of taste, I see. <laughs> Just. I wanted to also kind of explain um, the origins of Halloween and, and why a lot of more fundamentalist Christian groups see this holiday or this celebration as evil and, and bad. Um, so... For the people who don't know this, and maybe you guys already know this, but um, the according to history.com, but also um, as it's just discussed in Let's many bring up sources. I know, right? I will bring up <laughs> Dang, sources. However, there will be one source I don't name because I cannot stand the site. So um, understandable. So uh, Halloween, or at least what historians think used to be Halloween or what modern Halloween comes for is from a Celtic, a spiritual tradition, um, known as Samhain. 
I was definitely saying that wrong in the beginning. Thank God. Would History you like Channel. to spell it out so people can understand why you might have been yes. saying that so incorrectly? It's a, it's a Gaelic word. So it is spelled S A M H A I N. But you are supposed to pronounce it Samhain. <laughs> Apparent uh, again, according to the source. If I if if that's wrong, if there's any people that are you know experts on Celtic stuff, please please correct Send me. Send all but, your emails um, to Lexi. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> uh, Lexi at Lexi dot Lexi. Um, but <laughs> um, so it it comes from this uh this Celtic uh festival, which of course, um, you know, Celtic tradition is pagan, and um. I, growing up in a evangelical church, anything to do with the word pagan is essentially associated with evil, even though it is not that, and uh, it's really not that big of a deal, but they see paganism as like, oh my gosh, it's so terrible and, and horrible and all this, and so a lot of um, Christian churches will take some of these pagan festivals or rituals and things like that and uh kind of jesusify i know it's not a real word but you know find their <laughs> own way to to celebrate that and so i was gonna say it gets the point across <laughs> right yeah you know what i mean when i say that definitely yeah um so so yeah that's that's where that comes from originally is the festival of Samhain. um the excerpt here from history.com because they explain it a lot better than I do. It says, um, it is usually celebrated from October 31st to November 1st to welcome the harvest and usher in, quote, the dark half of the year. Celebrants believe that the barriers between the physical world and the spirit world break down during Samhain, allowing more interactions between humans and denizens of the other world. So hmm. that could be people who have passed. That could be demons. That could be, you know, again, whatever. It could be friends. Would, True, could be friends, could be some chilling ghosts, you know. Um, but, being yeah. chilling ghosts. Could be some homies. Yes. <laughs> right, being chilling. So anything that is in what is, quote, the other world. So makes sense, right? Um, and then on this same history source, it is talking about how it kind of merged with All Hallows' Eve, or what we know as Halloween. Um, and then it was pretty much they're saying here it was adopted in the 19th century America through Irish immigrants bringing traditions across the ocean. So um, that is where the roots of it, you know, Samhain was the Celtic festival. Irish immigrants came over to America, started to spread this idea of All Hallows Eve or Halloween. So um, makes a lot of sense as to why... Um, certain Christian groups would jump to the fact that this is bad and that this is evil. It says here that trick-or-treating is said to have been derived from the ancient Irish and Scottish practices in the nights leading up to Samhain. In Ireland, mumming was the practice of putting on costumes, going door-to-door -to -door and singing songs to the dead. Cakes were given as payment. So... That's you get paid definitely... in cakes? Hold up. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm like actually... man, a whole cake in this economy? <laughs> I mean, no, this is I actual... say, I mean, I'm not, no complaints for me. No. Right. I mean, I, you know. This is an I actual question. Cake. Like, how big of cakes are we talking? Like, they have to be small ones. Like, you're not going to give a full yeah, sheet probably. cake. Yeah, like, probably. Probably like a muffin. Maybe like a, a muffin or a Everyone gets a free cupcake. Twinkie. Probably a like a small. Twink. Yes. <laughs> one twink. Yeah, because Twinkies uh, were definitely around in you know Celtic, the Celtic. Era. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, that's where they came back from. In, I yeah. don't want to say ancient Ireland because this wasn't ancient, but way back long ago in Ireland, you know, yeah, they had Twinkies just in the good old around. days of Ireland. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I guess the, I guess it's the idea of like a sweet treat. You know, you got a little cake or whatever. <laughs> Yummy treat. Um. So. That is kind of the history, the origin of that. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into depth. This isn't like, I don't want to do a history channel, you know, report or whatever. But Why not? Just to give you guys um, <laughs> some information in case you didn't already have that. Um, so what I found interesting is that there is no official doctrine on Halloween within certain... Um, Christian groups, like there's not like even within the evangelical group, I there's no like 
doctrine that I could find that was like Halloween is bad and evil. Like there's no <laughs> there's no direct sentence or or thing about that. Um, however, I did find a source from an organization that I absolutely cannot stand, so I'm not going to mention their name. They have an article about uh, Christians who are really you know grappling with should should I celebrate Halloween? Um, and you know. That's one of those things where that's your own decision. I'm not judging anybody. If they choose not to celebrate, that's totally fine. Um, I'm talking more about the that's broader, you, yeah. yeah, the broader social uh, impact that that has uh, as far as churches fear mongering and giving this information, especially to kids. So, this article by organization that shall not be named um, says, "Should Christians celebrate Halloween?" The answer is. It depends. God desires faithful obedience for you and your family. For Christians, Halloween offers the opportunity to model faithfulness and obedience in our decision making. So basically this article is saying we're not going to come out and tell you that you shouldn't um, celebrate Halloween. Yet they have this passage here that says... Um, Within the context of Christianity and biblical references, Satan or Lucifer's origin has little to do with Halloween. Yet the relationship between the devil and Halloween exists for a reason. <laughs> the reason has developed over centuries because of the original emphasis upon death and even more sinister elements. So, um... Huh? <laughs> Eric? Huh? Okay, go on. Okay. So that tells me that even though this answer is not or this article is not giving you a definitive answer of yes or no you should celebrate halloween but when you write a paragraph like that um you've pretty much told me uh how you feel about that one you're not really leaving enough they're room like for i people ain't to, saying yeah. there's a connection there's not a lot of room for imagination there like <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah it's kind of like well we're not going to tell you you can't but know that the link between satan and halloween is very real and he will get you like that's basically <laughs> <laughs> that's basically how i read that um and then of I mean, course it's basically what it says we ain't yeah. saying like, there's not a connection <laughs> it's kind of hard to not read between the lines yeah and then it even <laughs> goes on to talk about you know, what does the Bible say about Halloween and, and all this stuff? And, um, you know, they this is where the, the tie-in really uh, happens with uh, magic and a lot of people saying that their kids couldn't read Harry Potter um, because it's like, oh, and you know, in the Bible, magic was also bad. And, and I can't speak to that. I have not read the Bible cover to cover, like, so nor do I want to. you are Warlock, so I mean... Oh, yeah. true. Yes. Um, but, true, true, true. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I just thought that that was a little bit humorous. But of course, unfortunately, it's not always humorous because there are actually people out there looking for answers and, and saying, you know, if I do this, you know, am I is it am I inviting demons into my home? Am I, you know, opening myself up for for darkness and things like that? And so Do you need to I have think a it's, salt ring? Like Oh action. my god. I mean never no, know. It'll kill your grass. <laughs> no, my it'll grass. Kill your grass. Don't do it. Um <laughs> Yeah, so I thought that that was really interesting and it just made me reflect on kind of how that's shown up in my life and then you know reading sources where people are talking about their experiences with not being able to celebrate halloween or actually just being baffled and being like what like there's people that think this is like they think this is real like they think halloween is actually you know when you're putting skeletons out in your yard or you're watching a horror movie that it's that this is real life and you're actually doing evil things like it's i've heard stuff from both sides and so that's why i wanted to to bring this up today and you know give you guys some information about my experience and then what other what some other people have experienced as well that was specifically the part that i was really interested in, is like hearing eric's comparative side of like i kind of assumed because you live in canada that you're just going to be like nah never heard of this crazy shit right like, that there would not i mean <laughs> yeah, but I never really had heard about that crazy stuff. <laughs> it sounds like a Bible Belt thing, and I think that's—I think it very much is. I think it's very much think, America yeah. Bible Belt, 
thing. Yeah, actually, while we were talking about when we loosely walked away from the subject, I actually uh, sneaky sent my mom a Facebook message. Uh, t- mm-hmm. To see if there was anything I was misremembering, I was just like, "Hey, did Halloween ever try to get banned here for any reason?" Uh, and then her response is just, "No, that's ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, "Okay," because apparently a lot of like evangelical areas try to do that in, in like, the Midwest. She sent back a laugh, uh, and then she says, "The only thing that has ever been banned or even considered in different places in the country is kids over sixteen, like no longer being allowed to go trick or treating." And right. some schools don't allow kids to costumes at school. Like it's yeah, <laughs> oh <my laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like it completely. <laughs> well, that makes a lot of sense though, because that has to do with like you know, hey, they don't want teenagers out past curfew doing stuff that they're supposed, you know, they're not supposed to do. So that that's coming from more of a yeah. like public safety perspective. Um, yeah, but and yeah, like, I don't know. Like I didn't even. I'm, just, I'm pretty sure the last time I properly trick or treated, I was like. 12 so oh, like, last I don't know. week Eric. Yeah. i don't know if that ever went into effect <laughs> what <laughs> you didn't go trick-or-treating last week on totally halloween what the fuck not not last week unfortunately not last what? week wait what do you this mean is, uh, wait, wait when halloween... this episode be going out like the day before halloween yeah, yes it hasn't or like been close halloween to? Yet. <laughs> that was the joke yeah, and then eric was just going trick-or-treating for no reason <laughs> oh my gosh yeah uh, see, I well think yeah no, i, mean, I already that do that strange. normally I don't even try to, like, put it under the guise of Halloween. Sometimes I'll just walk around my block and be like, yo, can I have, like, any candy or anything? Just like, yeah, you got an Xbox in there? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yo, you giving out them two liter of sodas? Uh- <laughs> it's A-O, baller. A-O? I, I need some of that two liter diet Peebus right now. Doctor, get <laughs> your Dr. Peebus oh right now. Dog. Yes. <laughs> um, one of the other things I was thinking about when we were talking about this is the fact that um, I... As I was digging into this topic, I know that it's very heavily related with the satanic panic that went on during the 80s and 90s um, here in America. Um, And I am not qualified to talk about the satanic panic. There are so many other amazing sources out there who have covered this topic and uh, specifically. No, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) we all are. Let's be an expert if I was. If you're. If you're too I mean, satanic, you're a little bit of a biased source, I think. That, that's more what I'm, I'm saying. Well, okay, true, true. But yeah. um, but no, for real, Um, I will try to find some links so we can link to something. If you're actually curious about learning about the satanic panic itself, um, there's a couple of good podcasts out there about that as well. Um, but I think this all ties in because you had the satanic panic in the 80s and 90s where everything was you know people were scared of these you know satanic influences and you know you even had the people oh my gosh if you listen to this record backwards it's it's <laughs> satanic messaging and so we came out of you know that era into the 90s and the 2000s where people were looking for things to be you know scared of or fearmonger about and it was you know pokemon and harry potter and it was like you know Pokemon not as much even though there is that video of that uh, pastor guy talking about how Pokemon is demonic and and there's Pokemonic that there is yeah oh my gosh no (laughs) I do I do know a YouTuber actually I think it was um, maybe I'll throw it up somewhere or or something but it's a YouTuber called Mr. Gigi that I watch sometimes and he actually did a video about the pokemon satanic panic thing he's a little bit older than us and so i think he was around when that was going on and it was a very interesting video yeah well we'll have to link that one because yeah that would be great too and so um yeah so like the pokemon panic um you know and then of course it was harry potter and and harry potter is witchcraft and so don't let your kids read harry potter and there's always been this evolution um of fear basically and it's really interesting because again growing up in the midwest there are still a lot of churches who they don't come out and say they're anti-halloween and they don't fear monger nearly as much but it has given rise to things like trunk or treats or fall festivals oh, or harvest or festivals um where sorry hold hold on back up trunk or treats well, I, yeah, I gotta actually ask eric this Eric, what do you think a trunk or treat is? Just right off the oh, top God. of your head. I, mean, I didn't even think about the fact that that people wouldn't know what this is. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I have never heard of that in my <laughs> I'm life. I'm so no. sorry. <laughs> okay, so trunk or treat. I mean, I mean, considering it's tr- okay, my mind is going to two places. So one, it's referring to a tree trunk, 
where it's like you do something around like a like okay. a tree or like give like you throw candy at the tree or something. I don't know. And then okay. the other just throwing thing, it, just chunking candy at a tree. <laughs> Why not? I don't know what the f- y'all get up to down there. Or, uh, but then the other thing that I'm thinking of is like maybe it's referring to like the trunk of a car. Like maybe there's like a communal meetup where like mm-hmm. <laughs> where people just put a bunch of candy in their trunks and then kids go around. And <laughs> yes, that's basically what it is. Wait, is that he it? Got um, it. He got so a lot Let's of go. a He's lot of churches. It. Will do, and and that, and I say a lot. I don't know. This might not be all over America again. I was born and raised in the Midwest, so this could be totally just like a um, local Midwest thing. I'm not sure, but um, I know it still does happen today. Um, I participated in a couple trunk or treats, and they still I still see them <laughs> advertised. Such a stupid name. It is. Uh, it is very dumb. <laughs> It is where uh, members of the church will uh, all meet up at the church and you park your car and you uh, open your trunk and sometimes people will decorate them. Sometimes they will just have a bowl of candy in there and then the children will walk around in the, no, you don't, you don't bob for the candy. (laughs) No. And then the children will walk around in cost, sometimes in costume if it's allowed um a uh, probably god honoring costumes um but <laughs> they will see. walk around in costume to each person's trunk instead of it being like trick or treat where you go to strangers doors and then they you you know, the each person yeah. yeah each person will hand out candy standing by their decorated trunk at the church so it's it's not a bad idea in theory i do understand why these things happen and they're not always religious i have seen some that are just community based where it's more people that you actually know and your kids not wandering around on streets where you don't know like you you know take them to this place and then you walk around with them while you're you're getting the candy and so from a safety perspective i totally understand why parents do this but a lot of the times i found that they are at churches and it is pushed more as a faith-based alternative to any other type of trick-or-treating or haunted houses or anything of that nature my, my so, personal experience with that one lexi was that during covid times or very shortly after covid times that was a very yeah. good way of like keeping people relatively like hey we're all gonna go outside. here instead and outside mm-hmm. instead That's- of a gathering and like doing stuff like that like it was just much more spread out in a parking lot and just one contained area instead of if one kid's sick walking to every house in a neighborhood and getting everybody at, at all the houses sick they right. would just be at the at the church basically or at a parking lot yeah, that's actually worse. a really good point yeah yeah because yeah, if it's outdoors and you're able to stay like far enough away from people where you wouldn't have that happen yeah right yeah, i can see the utility in that like right. that's the so, positive part yeah <laughs> yeah that's the positive and that's the more tame one of like um you also have churches that will do again a fall festival a harvest night where again you're going to the church instead of doing anything spooky and you know there might be like painting pumpkins there might be you know games and stuff but again it's meant as that faith-based alternative to any other sorts of activities you would be doing on halloween um, yeah okay I, was, I yeah i was wondering that too but it sounds like it's you know what it sounds like just kind of like an autumn themed festival right like there's yeah. ha- sp- specifically i have photos from um an event i attended with the church we were going to when i was a kid and i was a picture of me by a hay bale and yeah there's pumpkins and it's it's very generically fall um instead of it, like it avoids the spooky at all costs you know there's no carved pumpkins there's no none of that but it's just mainly yeah hay bales and squashes and you know harvest yay a gourd like just maybe a, a scarecrow if we're feeling a little spooky you know maybe there's a oh, little happy oh. scarecrow if we're um, a little, little, little scarecrow little is a treat <laughs> <laughs> Just a tiny I, bit spookumed. I'm very curious oh. to see um, the people that are listening or, or viewing this. Um, if you what have any experience with uh, being told Halloween is scary, if you come from a country that you don't even really celebrate Halloween, because I know that there are countries that they're like, what really is Halloween? Like maybe they know it from a movie or because they've heard stuff from America, but their country doesn't really celebrate. Um, so I'm really curious to see what. Um, people's experiences are but before I, I get too far off topic the the most extreme version of 
uh, Jesusifying Halloween is actually something that I had never heard of um, before. It is the concept of a hell house. What? Um, <laughs> And there is a fantastic video if you want a deep dive on hell houses and specific examples. Uh, go check out Jen at Fundy Fridays on YouTube. Um, she does a fantastic job uh, overviewing that. But I will just give a short description that hell houses were meant to be an alternative to haunted houses. And they are another fear-mongering tactic where do you get to experience what hell is that's my guess basically basically <laughs> Let's um, go. Let's it go. was meant for teenagers so typically not for children so children would would do an equivalent of you know a little harvest festival or whatever these are more meant for teenagers young adults um that would be interested in be able to participate in actual scary demonic haunted houses um <laughs> they would do these hell houses and these hell houses were a way for them to basically if i want to use a nice word uh spread the word or, or spread the faith of um what can happen to you if you are a sinner if you were doing things that are outside of god's will for you so uh, without getting into graphic detail, because I don't want to have to put a, a trigger warning or, you know, freak people out. But um, yeah. you would basically walk through scenarios of people who might be um, in costume as actors um, or there might be projections, things like that. Um, typically, these are older. I don't know if there are modern day churches doing this. This was maybe, this was really big, I think about 20 years ago, I want to say. Um, and on the Fundy Fridays video, Jen, Jen points out kind of the timeline of that. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if churches were still doing this to this day. But you walk through scenarios that are people sinning, um, and that could be, you know, smoking, drinking, um, things like that all the way up to um you know no no behaviors that you're not supposed to do i'm sure we can all think of whatever the bible mentions as being sinful or, or you've heard people say oh this I, is a sinful thing you know i do have a quick question lexi like because i've never yeah. heard of this either until you mentioned this how deep did it go like i don't want you to get graphic or have to do a trigger warning but like were there people that are like i cheated on my test and went to hell or is it like to um, scare to scare like, like stuff little you should be kids. in jail for life for yep. <laughs> like something. so the in my experience from what i've researched and again um in the fundy fridays video jen talks about uh these are not meant for children like young children were not going in these they, oh, these okay. were like teen again teenagers you know high school age kids young adults maybe in college gotcha. who okay. would be wanting to go to actual haunted houses but going to the hell houses and being scared for their life because they're afraid they're going to go to hell instead of being scared because uh you know a clown with a chainsaw jumped out at them that is um, scary though Lexi. but it does it yeah. goes very deep um some of these hell houses um you know yeah it's like again drinking like drinking a beer and ah. all this stuff and so okay wow that's really not it's not really that scary but of course they decorate it to where you're in the pitch black they put the spooky music you know they they may have somebody dress up as the devil and you know all that stuff all the way up to um very intense uh i i don't even know what i could say on youtube or or whatever but um whatever you could think of as being very traumatic to somebody and trying to scare them into not doing it it was, like, it was an example like did they just like oh if you kill somebody like duh is like something like that yeah or that's is actually even... a good that's a good point probably we could use that as an example because it's not very explicit yes they had they showed a thing of like you know murdering someone or whatever and they would actually some of these places would go so far as to you know prop knife and there's blood and there's screaming and they're you know and Jesus. you're in this room oh gosh yeah you're in hardcore more than stuff i normally do for halloween <laughs> Jeez. right right so it's very interesting and of course hell houses are not extremely common um i want to start of one course now. not uh, no please don't <laughs> um, but 
those types of scenarios have happened. And of course, at the end of the day, what is that meant to do? Well, it's meant to scare people. It's meant to scare people into thinking, wow, I need to go to church or wow, I need to change my ways or my behavior because I don't want to, you know, get murdered. I don't want, you know, to go to hell. I don't want, you know, it's, it's very traumatizing to walk through a dark room with scary music and screaming and blood, fake, fake blood. But still, you know, that's, you know, you're not expecting that. And even if you go no. through a haunted house, it's like, okay, yeah, maybe the clown with the chainsaw jumps out at you, but you know that's fake. Versus the hell houses, their appeal or their what they're trying to do is be like, no, this is real. This is what's going to really happen gonna to You're really going to go you. to hell, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, if yeah. you do these yeah. things, you know, if you drink a beer, you know, you could go to hell. Like that level of, of stuff. So um, I just wanted to highlight that too because I think I I personally have never been to a hell house. I don't I don't have any experience with that. But yeah, if if you're interested in learning about hell houses, um, a couple of years ago, Fundy Fridays on YouTube. Um, look for look for Jen. She did a video about that. Um, but that blew my mind when I saw that. But I I also, as much as I was surprised, I kind of wasn't surprised because of all of the fear mongering that goes into halloween and trying to trying to do anything you can to get kids to not celebrate halloween but then still co-opting and like taking those ideas of scaring kids and trying to turn it into something that's godly and it it's very <laughs> it's yeah, very yeah, I was weird say, like after yeah like after everything else we talked about like in terms of what different churches and evangelical groups like try and do to deter people away from Halloween. It just kind of feels like this is the next, I want to say logical step. I mean, it's not very logical, but to them, it's probably <laughs> logical. Like it's like the next progression, like the next step up. Right. In that yeah. regard, step up to the streets. Like it's, it's that like, next. if we're really yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. if we're really gonna get to them, then we need to try to draw them in and make them think that this is something that's a Halloween experience. And then we'll be like, gotcha. It's actually about yeah. your soul, you know? Whoops, you have My trauma soul. now. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. yeah. That, the whoops, <laughs> you have trauma now, for sure. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, of course, there's not been an actual, you know, nationwide or even statewide ban of Halloween. You know, there's not been, as far as I'm aware. At and again, least in this, America. We yeah. Well, in America. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, I don't think that there has been like legislation to c try to cancel Halloween or anything. But um, I do know that certain fundamentalist Christian groups do try to use their power and their influence in a community and try to say, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. Why don't you come to the church instead? Um, I, I just and, have a question about the whole like. I understand that some people might see it as very evil or very like, again, like I grew up and I was very normalized about like, Ooh, this is evil. You're going to go to hell. If you, if you follow this or if you celebrate Halloween and stuff, but like, why? I know this is not just an answer for you. It's more of a rhetorical question, but like, why is it such a sticking point of like Halloween? Like there are so many other holidays that if you go down deeper and deeper of like, Ooh, this kind of has a weird thing like this or this or this or this, but like the really, rigidness of ooh these scary movies ooh skeletons and stuff like that like that's the part that i personally still don't really get and understand because i feel as though if you look at other things like oh well fall is still a very serviceable and a thing that's, that happens every year basically right of like it yeah. comes around you hang out you get to to eat some pumpkin pie or eat some of this or eat some of this and just have a fall centric holiday and a fall centric like celebration but whenever you add in this layer of like but this one day is evil like it almost elevates it to this point of like it's cooler now because oh well i'm not supposed to be able to go celebrate halloween <laughs> it's metal <laughs> it's metal i'm gonna go put a 12 foot skeleton up like i think i think people really love halloween and not just because of this stuff but just because halloween's very cool but specifically they just really love like the like I am Lewis, like that that pumpkin that goes. Oh I yeah, I am Lewis and stuff like that. There's entire oh, shout out to Lewis. Shout out, hey, yo, shout out my bro Lewis. <laughs> shout out to the pumpkin Lewis. But there's entire <laughs> stores, entire like entire business models around Halloween. But then there's the whole other side that's trying to cancel. Like I don't understand this war almost that they're trying to 
the war on Halloween. Yeah, like it feels like that, even though <laughs> you know, it's really interesting that you bring that up because I think that was going to be one of my points. Is that, um, of course, I'm speaking from a very again born and raised in the Midwest uh, sort of thing, so this might not be applicable to even other areas of America. But I think personally, in my own life. Um, being told that I couldn't celebrate Halloween for even that was really only a few years. You know, my parents kind of realized like, Hey, this is kind of dumb. Like, why are we being so rigid about this? Like they really no, honestly. And I gave, I gave my mom some crap for it. And I, we were joking about it. And I was like, yeah, I remember those few years where you wouldn't let me go even to my friend's house because you were afraid I was going to go trick or treating at my friend's house. And she laughs about it now because she's kind of embarrassed. But I think a lot of parents were, just trying to protect their kids and if their church that they trusted was saying oh no don't let your kids do this this opens up a whole can of worms that you know like literally you might be letting demons in then um you know i think the natural response is for the young people that were subjected to that to if if they no longer believe that to say man i missed out on five ten years of my childhood or of my life not being able to celebrate this so like why yeah, not? not being able to go do stuff with your friends like yeah right like why not celebrate it now because now i don't hold that same belief that i once did um and i think that's why in america or even you know in the midwest we're seeing this uptick of people that are buying 12 foot skeletons and are you know posting halloween pictures about oh who up baking these cookies and it's the little <laughs> pumpkin cookie you know print things and i think it's become an even bigger holiday because it it's a it's in one part a rebellion if you've been somebody that's been subjected to that but in another way it's also one of the holidays that actually doesn't have as much of a religious leaning and so a bunch of people from a bunch of different religious backgrounds can come together and celebrate this and have a fun time versus, you know, the bigger holidays, at least in America, Easter. What is that? It's a Christian holiday. Christmas. What is that? Mostly a Christian holiday. I mean, yeah, of course, Santa and, you know, all that stuff. But mostly people are, you know, Christian people going to church like that's that's a huge holiday. And obviously Hanukkah is not as huge. You know, people don't really, of, of course, there's Jewish people that celebrate Hanukkah, but it's not nearly as big of a deal as Christmas, you know, and it's also, I think, without me being on a five hour soapbox, I think it's also the commercialization of it too. Halloween is a very easy holiday to, uh, to sell, pump out merch for. Uh, it's a couple yeah. merch. Halloween goes It, it merch. is very unique in terms of its like aesthetics and right. like what mm -hmm. is for sale and what you do during that. So, yeah. And there's there's a big demand for it, so it's it's a big money maker. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think that's an, another reason too. And and uh, to your point, Gordon, about uh, the you know why is why are they so you know against Halloween? I think it's because it doesn't have a religious leaning. They can't, um, you know, they. I, I don't want to make this statement because I don't want to offend anybody who happens to be a Christian because I, I don't I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I think there are some Christian people that get upset that they can't really put a Jesus spin on Halloween. Um, so what's the next best thing? Okay, well, we're going to make our own thing then. We're going to ignore Halloween. We're going to say that it's demonic and it's bad because, again, the origins of it being where the, you know, the most open time for the other world or for what some people might say is hell or whatever, you know, that's where they're like, oh, see, demons, see, this is this is not a religious holiday. So I think that plays a part in it as well, which, again, I mean, no offense to anybody who who either A, doesn't celebrate Halloween, or B, is a Christian. I'm not making overarching statements. Um, just kind of my observations about that. That's that's very much where, where I come at it from, too. Oh, hi, Battle Bus. <gasps> Battle, um, Battle Bus appearance. <laughs> Battle Bus on the podcast. Let's <laughs> Battle go. Battle Bus on the podcast. Moving exactly two inches and shaking her head to get my attention. Yes. Cult of Battle Bus is very pleased. It's, <laughs> they're Absolutely. very, very happy. But... <laughs> no, I, I'm glad that you thought about that, too, and I'm glad that I could lead into what you were talking about as well, Lexi, and 
I know that it's a very difficult, hard, hard thing for a lot of people. Because again, it's I know it's not entirely an American based thing. Because I'm sure I'm almost certain there's something similar. But maybe with other holidays across the world, of maybe they have issues with this in places like, uh, we'll just say like Saudi Arabia with a different holiday, or in an Asian country with another holiday and stuff like that. Of one right. religious side has has done this with it, or one side has done this and this and this, and like. It can cause a lot of, if not turmoil, but just a lot of very difficult times in the, and it getting pushed back and forth of it's good, it's bad, oh it's accepted, it's not accepted. So, I I very much can understand exactly where you're coming from. So, just wanted to yeah. add that little piece in. Oh, I appreciate that, and I think again, without going on a five-hour soapbox, I think that capitalism has a big part to play in it. Um, you know, if stores and companies can profit off of really anything it doesn't even have to be a holiday but if they can profit off anything they're going to be like uh, we see dollar signs let's you know let's make something for this and um you know we've seen it even with the yeah. rise of like <laughs> i feel like i see all the time on social media I like see. today is national ice cream day today is national buy an envelope day like i, I feel like i <laughs> i see uh, oh, Yo, things for cool. that all the time <laughs> Um, and so, of course, if a store or a company is like, hey, man, people really want more envelope merch for for <laughs> National Lick an Envelope Day, like, that could be the next big thing. I mean, it's not going to be, but just as a stupid example, like, if the demand is there and they can make money off of it, then they're going to, they're going to seek that out. So I think that's something that's maybe a little bit more unique to America in that way, too, is I, I think in general holidays feel like they keep getting bigger and bigger and longer and longer and you know we see christmas stuff out in june and like it's i think it's just because they're like we want the money on the i was gonna answer. say especially with christmas too oh yeah or, or like all all holidays like freaking valentine's day and like saint patty's day oh, and yeah. everything it's all like a lot of it is really easy to just commoditize mm -hmm. is that the right word come on you know Com what I mean. yeah commodify <laughs> yeah you're right commodify okay yeah um yeah, no, but that's a really good point, too. Like, you know, it sells. Right. Yeah, of course. Why well, I think you see, like, 8 million Spirit Halloweens pop up around this time. <laughs> exactly. Right. We, oh, in this house, we love Spirit Halloween, though. I love Spirit Halloween. That is Shout true. Out. I do like Spirit Halloween. Love I should go to one, actually, before the before the season uh, goes Lewis. out. No, I think Lewis is at Target. No! I don't think oh, Lewis oh, is at Spirit Halloween. Still. But oh, um, shout out, we love we love a spirit Halloween. Um, but, yeah, so that was a kind of a lot of me talking, and I hope that... Um, people did enjoy some of the information maybe they knew it already maybe they didn't um if you are listening and you you're either absolutely shocked because this sounds like the wildest shit you've ever heard please let <laughs> if us you, know if you also didn't know what the hell a yeah. trunk or treat was uh, I, <laughs> I am very much uh because it was my lived experience so when i talk about it i'm, I'm just assuming like oh people know what this is and so even that little moment of eric being like what is a trunk or treat like <laughs> I could tell that immediately was... he was going to be like, what is a yeah. trunk? As soon as you said that, I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, this is a very I'm like, wait, thing. this isn't. Yeah. A lot of people didn't experience this. And so. Bro doesn't know about uh, trunk or treat. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Wow. He's really missing out. Um, but it's just another little reminder because, of course, you know, there's bigger issues that we're more aware of, right? That everybody has different feelings or, or thoughts on or experiences but something like this where it's like oh yeah i grew up and halloween was considered evil and people are like oh that's weird it's, yeah. it's a little bit shocking <laughs> like you're able to look back on it now and be like huh that's it's kind of funny like you know what why, why did we do that like why? why did we do that yeah you know and it's it's really funny because i can uh bring it up to my mom and uh she's like yeah i don't know why because uh yeah we went from halloween was totally fine and my brother could read Harry Potter, and then it was not okay. And now we've circled back to when I was like a teenager. One of our family vacations, we went to uh, Orlando to Disney World, and we were at the Halloween party at Disney World. So, like, it, you know, it comes full circle too. Yeah. Like, this is okay. Oh my gosh, now it's not okay. But it's evil. I think it also, yeah, I think it also speaks to the fact that, um, the the broader PSA is that we're really influenced by our community, by our family members and our religious groups that we interact with. And sometimes it's good to take a step back and say like, okay, do I actually like this? Do I actually think this? And 
you yeah. know like like is this actually a good thing to promote or to think about right or do yeah. i even actually agree with this um you know because obviously it's changed in my own personal lifetime with my my parents and myself and um so i think that's a a broader sort of thing to end on even though i know it's spooky halloween um but just asking yourself hey does this does this make sense to me? And also at the end of the day, who is this benefiting? Put some thoughts on that noggin of yours. Exactly. <laughs> what was that <laughs> I, I don't know what that accent was. Something something like deep and dark just came out That's of me. I don't know what that was. It's because, Happy <laughs> it's because you celebrate Halloween, Eric. The oh, he's been. Is coming in. John Halloween is coming to take my John soul. <laughs> this is John, John Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> That's yeah. That's that's Satan. No, Satan's number one demon he sends out on Halloween is John Halloween. You know, <laughs> or actually, it's probably uh, Michael Myers because you know the Halloween movies. That's why they're named Halloween. Ah, uh, true. Right. I tell you, I work yeah. with a guy it's from, actually the that works on name in that, in that movie. Yeah. Oh uh, no, I don't think. Eric, I sorry, that. what did you say? We all talked over each other then. I already forgot what I said. I'm gonna be honest. Okay. With my memory. <laughs> I, I I I can't think. My brain is like a really Period. like it's like a it's like a half gigabyte <laughs> stick of RAM where it has room for like half one gigabyte? thought and once the thought leaves oh my goodness. it's like it's just gone forever. Bro's like it's rocking <laughs> a half gigabyte of RAM over here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, on a little bit of a lighter note, because that was very me ranting heavy, um, what do we think are gonna be some of the top Halloween costumes for this year? Do leave a comment down below also what you think that the yeah, top yeah one leave be. your comments about it but True. probably something from the boys i ain't even gonna lie like the boys? i would not be surprised if i saw like multiple homelander costumes Hopefully. all right Andrew. all right probably primarily worn by like young teens though like True. teenagers like i don't think i don't think six-year-olds are watching the boys i i, I mean i hope, hope they're not, not watching that the would be funny, i don't though. watch the boys <laughs> i don't watch it would the be boys. funny <laughs> i've heard it's very gory so i'm like oh no thank you <laughs> It is very like it is very a lot, very yeah. a lot. So hopefully, yes. hopefully no Ve six year old, no six year old Homelanders show up to your homes. Um, if they do, I'm send thinking... us some pictures. Send them to Lexi. <laughs> True. Yeah, please don't. Please don't do that. You know, Lexi at Lexi dot Lexi. Uh, no. Yes. That's, yeah. That's don't. it. How did you um, know? How could you forget? <laughs> Darn it. My. How my... did you forget that you know? No. Anyway. How can you forget that you know? Uh, my guess is I think we're going to still see a lot of. Uh, Minecraft for young kids. I think a lot of kids are still going to do the Minecraft. Did I hear Halloween free costumes. on kids? Yeah. No, a lot of young kids. Oh, I thought you said Minecraft free on kids, as though they were like. No, or maybe f Minecraft for young kids is what I said. Oh, okay. I did not say free on. I I swear to you. I know we've been recording a that. long time. I was actually kind of surprised at how much Minecraft, because like Minecraft has always had like lifetime free updates. So I'm surprised mm -hmm. that there's still so many sales of the game and then i remembered it's because there's so many kids that are getting into minecraft because it's right so freaking old and like then, i'm so used to it for like 15 years but then there's a bunch of young kids that are buying it new and, and eric you know parkour civilization like it just came out oh my goodness you know about parkour civilization <laughs> I'm gonna keep it 100. What's parkour civil? That is for another day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that might be. Forget? I think we're we're a bit far. <laughs> yeah, I was I was trying to wrap up with Halloween themed things. We're not gonna. <laughs> Uh, uh, Minecraft was in relation to that, nothing else. Um, well, true. I yeah. have a feeling would, I'll see less Freddy Fazbear's and less Five Nights at Freddy's characters would this you, year. Eric, would you do the single jump yeah. for the chicken, or would you do the would you do okay. the one vertical um, jump? So for thank the beef? you so much. Thank you so much for listening to this uh, Halloween episode of How Could you, How Could You Forget or How Could Boo Forget? Um, oh. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too heavy, and I. Hope I was not too uh, preachy or ranty. Um, no, you were good, I think. If, I mean, if you were preachy, that'd be kind of ironic. That, but, you know yeah. what? That would be ironic. <laughs> That's a good um, one, Eric. Thank you. <laughs> stay safe out there, everybody. Enjoy your Halloween. Or not. If you don't celebrate, that's totally fine. But yes. um, enjoy. Whatever you do, do it safely. Absolutely. And always check your candy. Because, you know, that's yes. another panic is that there's always there's always strange things in the candy. There's that uh, whole TV show in there. The whole TV show? The Stranger Things. Oh my goodness. Stranger <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I totally missed that. True. And also, important thing, you know, be safe, check your candy, all that stuff, because if you don't, 
then you're not going to be able to go to put in your social security.com <laughs> and subscribe to that the page. That is a great segue. <laughs> That's a great point. Man, he's got <laughs> How some can great you give points. us money if you're not. <laughs> You have to no, say. No, but seriously, thank you to all the patrons on both me and uh, Gordon's patrons. You guys are dope. Thank Everyone you. watching is dope, but y'all yes. y'all getting extra dope. You are dope, dope, dope. Thank you so much. Happy Halloween, <laughs> and we'll see you in the next one.